Hey everyone, I'm Kathy Bolton with A Plus Realty Group, and thanks for joining me. My guest today is Ms. Donna Jones. She is the manager with Interlink Mortgage Services, LLC. Donna comes to us with a wealth of knowledge that she is willing to share. Hi, Donna, and thanks for joining me today. Well, hi, Kathy, and thanks for having me. Sure. Well, today we are going to focus on forbearance. So, Donna, what actually is forbearance? Forbearance is a temporary postponement of your house payments or any payment, but in this case, your house payment. Um, so the, it's not like you're skipping payments because you will be making them up at some point. Okay. okay. All right. Well, that's simple enough. Yep. Um, how is the mortgage industry reacting to the forbearance plan allowed by the CARES Act? Well, the mortgage industry, especially on the servicing side, the, the side that collects the payments, have um, really tried to, they, their, their arms are, are strapped to some degree because they're not they're not allowed to not allow somebody into forbearance. So it has affected um, some of the way that we do our business in that we have to verify um, that you're not in forbearance if you're trying to get a mortgage. Um, it has affected our pricing to some degree, which is our interest rates. Okay, okay. Well, would you say that a forbearance is a good option for homeowners? It is a good option if you've been affected by the coronavirus or a furlough, the COVID-19 situation. Okay. So if your income has been affected, it's a good option rather than um, getting behind on your mortgage payments. Okay. But if you haven't been affected, then you should not really, in my opinion, just jump into it. Now, one thing is that if you think you might be affected by a furlough or your income being reduced, you can always um, ask for forbearance, but at the same time, continue to make your house payments. That okay. way, if, if something does change and you've been severely impacted, you're able to to go with the forbearance and but but if you don't need to you shouldn't because like i said it's just a postponement and at some point you will have to repay those payments okay so it's a good option if you really need it right okay so now how long is the forbearance period usually um a forbearance period is good for 180 days which would be six months and at the end of that six months, if you um, still feel like you need another six months, you can ask for that. And so in, in reality, it can be up to a year. Okay. Um, okay. So now how will forbearance affect a person's credit? If you were behind when you went into forbearance, then your mortgage will continue to show as delinquent. Um, on your credit report until you make up the amounts that you are behind. But if you were current, then it will not show the, any delinquencies on your credit. Um, so it won't really affect your credit score. So if you are behind when you go into forbearance, it would probably be best to try to make up that amount that you're behind uh, even while you're in forbearance so that it won't continue to show delinquent on your credit report. Okay, great, great. So now how will forbearance affect future financing of a home? Well, when we, you and I first started talking about forbearance, it was um, going to affect you for 12 months. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you come out of forbearance, you would not have been able to finance a house for until you've made 12 consecutive payments on your mortgage. Right. Now they have most, most types of loans have changed that to three months. Okay. So you have to make three months of consecutive payments after you come out of forbearance 
to be able to either refinance your home or purchase a, and finance another home. Okay. Now, some of that, some of those rules may vary depending on what type of loan you're going to get. But, okay. but in general, it's a three months now. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for um, explaining that. And what about COVID-19? How has that affected your ability to do home financing? Um, COVID-19, COVID really, when it, in mid-March, uh, um, came around and it was evident of what, what a disaster it was going to be to jobs and income yeah. um, and the ability to earn income, everything got real risky. So mm -hmm. we can still do loans with lower credit scores. However, the interest rates and the pricing on those loans is high okay. because of the risk, because right. they're pricing in risk. Um, even on a refinance, if I'm doing a refinance and your credit scores are not stellar, mm -hmm. you might not get nearly as good an interest rate right. as you would if you had good credit. Um, and it all goes back to risk. Exactly. The risk. The risk has just gotten riskier. In <laughs> fact, we have to verify um, that that you are on your job, that your income is still the same. And if you had been furloughed, I have to verify that you're back at the same status that you were. Okay. And, and where that will get a little complicated is people that have not a, not a set income. So in other words, if you, for example, if you're uh, a waitress and your restaurant got closed down and a lot of your income was tips, Normally, we would average that income on tips, average what you claimed on your tax returns. Well, now you've gone several months with no tips, even if, and we can't count unemployment. So it's going to be a kind of a case by case basis on how we calculate income on each borrower. Now, some people continue to get paid, like if you were in education, right? Got continued to get paid. Um, However, if you were in education, but you were a bus driver, it might be different because you don't have the extra bus driving because you don't have, you might still get your base pay, but you're not taking people to football games or taking students to um, field trips. So. Right. Yep. So COVID-19 has definitely affected so many people in various ways. Um, what about the interest rates? How has that been? Because I know a few months ago when everything first started, it was really crazy, but um, it seemed like it leveled out a little bit. Can you explain a little bit about the interest rates? The, the, on, a, on a Sunday, and I don't remember which Sunday it was, was when the feds took the, the Fed funds rate down to almost zero. Not quite, but almost zero. Right. Um, and so our phones rang off the hook because everyone thought our interest rates on mortgages were at zero. Right. Um, the, the Fed funds rate is the overnight rate that banks loan to banks, or that banks borrow money at. And it does affect our rates sometimes, but it's not a direct correlation to it. Okay. However, our rates have come down. Um, especially if you've got stellar credit, a good income, you're going to get, if you've got credit scores in the 700s, you're going to get a very good interest rate. That's and um, some, many times we get spoiled. Um, we we want to get down into the, the mid twos and um, really the mid threes is still a good interest rate. It is, yes. <laughs> That's right. It beats from, uh, what was it, back in 1987 when they were really high? 1980, yeah. I think they were like, what, they were extremely high back then. Well, back then was about when I started in the business, 1986. Yeah. We, we were busy refinancing people to seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all relative but they were happy to get seven and a half because exactly. their rate was 12 or, that's or right. 14 yes we have been spoiled that's for sure and and interest rates will stay low for a while so what i would suggest that 
if you don't have your credit where it needs to be to get the best rate possible, let's work on that and get it up there so you can take advantage of the lower rates while that's they're right. That's right. And that's good to know that you're available not only to help people purchase a home right now, but to help them and guide them um, to get them where they need to be so they can get that better interest rate. So, all right. Well, Donna, is there anything else that you want to add today? Um, I don't think so, unless you have something particular. No, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. And, uh, well, that basically concludes our interview with Ms. Donna Jones, who is located at 210 North Main Street here in Hinesville. And her contact number is 912-369-4000 or you can also reach her on her cell, which is 912-572-4000. Once again, my name is Kathy Villafane with A Plus Realty Group, and thank you for watching.